I wanted to ask you about the launch of the Yes 23 campaign yesterday. What do you think of the voice and of the campaign that's being run for it? Well, I mean, I think I've, I've been fairly clear in um, my concerns about the lack of information that's been provided to Australians around what the constitutionally enshrined voice um, is likely to mean for Australians. And when we can't get, you know, um, people who are experts in the constitution, we can't get the legal fraternity, we can't even get Indigenous Australians to agree um, on what this actually is and what it's going to look like going forward. So, uh, you know, it's concerning, but what I'd say is that Every single Australian individually, one by one, will walk into that ballot box and cast their vote. Uh, don't be influenced by, you know, the pressure that's put on you by others. Go and find out for yourself the information uh, that you need to know about both the yes and the no cases and then go and make your own informed decision. Because I'd suggest that, you know, corporate Australia and also some of the big sporting bodies, I'm sure they haven't asked, you know, their, their shareholders or their players as to what their views are. Um, these are, this is corporate Australia and big sport in Australia and the capital cities making a, a statement. But I'd say to every Australian, make your own mind up. And just on that, your leader had some choice comments yesterday about corporates donating to The Voice, almost being, he's almost saying they're almost being shamed into it or being gutless. Do you back that in? Well, look, I, I certainly think that, um, you know, there is an informed choice to be made here. Um, and corporate Australia just going out and picking one side without, you know, clearly understanding the details. Because, I mean, no one, no Australian understands the details of this voice because they simply aren't there, despite having been asked the government a million times to provide more detail. So corporate Australia going out and throwing money at one um, side of an, of an argument um, when there's no information, you know, is, I probably would say, as I said before, you know, Australians should actually be going in and informing themselves and not being told what to do by people who live in big cities. Just in your portfolio of health, the uh, pharmacists have started a campaign against the government's 60-day dispensing rules. Do you think they have any hopes of overturning the government's position on this or coming to a negotiation? Well, I'd be saying to the Albanese Labor government and to Mark Butler as the minister, get back to the table. I mean, nobody, nobody could deny that getting Australians more affordable and easier access to medicines is a good thing. But what this government has done is without consultation, without any modelling, without considering the secondary consequences, have actually forced the, the cost of this measure, this cost of living relief measure that they're claiming so much credit for, they're actually making your community pharmacy pay for it. And so... Right now, I'd be saying to the government, get back to the table, negotiate in good faith. You've got the community pharmacy agreement that's in place that you really have trashed by this action. Get back to the table so we can make sure we have the best of both worlds, Australians getting access to cheaper medicine, but also community pharmacy not being compromised, um, their viability of being compromised by an action of the government that they haven't even bothered to consult on. The PM keeps seeming to duck to what he promised in terms of a COVID inquiry or Royal Commission. Do you support such an inquiry and is it time for one? Well, I mean, obviously there's been a lot of investigation into, into COVID, but, you know, the, it's once again a case of the Prime Minister went to the election with a whole heap of promises that he made to Australians. And I think Australians have got every right to be expecting this government and this Prime Minister to actually deliver on their promises, whether it be this particular one or a myriad of other promises that he seems to have completely forgotten about now. Well, speaking of which aged care, you are making a, a thing of that, I suppose. The deadline for the government's promise for all aged care homes to have a nurse on 24-7 was on last Saturday. That's obviously not been met. Do you see the promise as some so sort of con? Do you think the government will, in a, say, a year's time, deliver on it? Well, obviously, right now, the biggest challenge facing our care um, sector across the board is, is access to workforce. And... You know, it doesn't matter how much this government wants to legislate. Um, you know, it, simply their workforce just isn't there. We know that, you know, we're some 8,000 registered nurses short right now just to deliver on the commitments that are before us today. So, um, you know, obviously we want the best possible care and we'd love to see 24-7 nurses in all of our aged care facilities. But, you know, you ca simply can't deliver that if you don't have the workforce. And what we'd be saying is... You know, stop with um, putting so much stress and pressure and anxiety onto our aged care sector. 
let them actually do the best possible job they can to look after our older Australians and let's work with the sector to try and see if we can work through resolving the challenges that are before us so we can get on with delivering the care that I think every Australian wants for older Australians when they are in a position where they have to go into residential care. And we have the Fadden by-election on in a couple of weeks. What's an acceptable result for the Liberal Party in this by-election? Well, obviously, you never take any election for granted and certainly by-elections can be tricky at the best of times. But I think we've pre-selected a, a, a great candidate. He's a local member of the community. He's out on the ground working really hard. And we'd hope that, uh, you know, Australians would be noticing by now that for all the promises of the Albanese Labor government when they went to the election last year, I don't think there'd be an Australian who could stand here today and say that they thought that they were better off than they were 12 months ago. And so we hope that the people of Haddon will see that because uh, we've got a great candidate and I think it's a real opportunity for them to send a message to the Albanese Labor government that for all their promises, life is not better under Mr Albanese. What if there isn't a swing to you? That'll spell real trouble for the next federal election, wouldn't it, if that were to occur? Well, as I said, you never take a by-election for granted. You never take any election for granted. There's always... Um, you know, it, it's, it's challenging. Um, you're not going to change the government by the result um, of the election. But um, as I said, we've got a great candidate. He's working really, really hard. He's a local uh, member of the community, served on his local council. And I, I think, you know, he uh, provides a really great and strong candidate for the people of Fadden to, to vote for. So obviously we're hopeful that the people of Fadden will see, um, you know, what a great candidate we've got, but also the fact that the... Um, you know, this government has not delivered on the promise of making life better for Australians. In fact, every Australian's life is worse.